Hi, hello, namaste everyone. How are you all? Hope all are fine and happy at home. That's good. Yes. Let me remind you once again, my dear students, unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic. Yes, try to understand everyone. I am just reminding, reminding you once again, unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic. Yes, better be careful and take care of yourself. So always remember, always remember regular washing of your hands. Yes, wearing mask and social distance. That's good, my dear students. So on that note, let me welcome you all to this English class, Standard 8, Third Language English. And today, we are going to discuss about a wonderful poem that is a child's evening prayer. What's the name of the poem? Child's Evening Prayer. Come on then, why to waste the time? Take out your textbook, pen, pencil, writing materials. Let's begin our today's session. Are you all ready? Yes, that's great. Yes, as I told you that, the name of the poem is Child's Evening Prayer. Written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. I want you to observe the screen, my dear students. Observe the picture too. That, that particular symbol recognizes how we do prayers. And this poem is written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Yes. Before going to the poem, before going to the content of the poem, let me just tell you about some of the motivational quotes regarding the topic of prayer, which is most important to understand before going to the content of the poem, my dear students. I want you to observe the screen over here. It says like this. Prayer is the most important conversation of your day. Let me repeat. Try to understand. Prayer is the most important conversation of your day. Take it to God. Take it to God before you take it to anyone else. How wonderful, no? Yes, really, it gives us a wonderful message, my dear students. That sense of understanding, we need to get it from this particular quotation. Let me read you once again. Prayer is the most important conversation of your day. Take it to God before you take it to anyone else. Because the prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. Always remember, the prayer is the pathway to reach the God. So that's why the prayer of a right man is always powerful and, all, and always most effective. So try to understand the importance of the prayer. Yes. On that note, let us go to the poem that is a child's evening prayer. Now I request all of you to open your textbook, page number 65. And it has been given, given in your textbook a wonderful poem that is a child's evening prayer. Prayer. If you just observe the screen, my dear students, you can able to make out a small boy who is doing the prayer over there. You know, the symbolic representation. Yes. Before going to the content of the poem, let me explain you about pre-reading activity. Yes, it is important everyone to know before going to the content of the poem. Yes. Now all of you see the textbook, I, as I told you before, that is open your textbook page number 65 and see the pre-reading activity. It says like this, usually our mother teaches us to pray to God. How fantastic, no? It's always true, my dear students. In one way, I can say that mother is most important and she is the representative of God. Am I right? Really. Usually our mother teaches us to pray to God before we begin our day-to-day -day activities. This is what the word we need to understand. What is this day-to-day -day activities? 
Now, just recall my dear students, when we, when we go to school, we, we assemble in the ground and we do prayers. When we go to our classroom, we do prayer. During the lunch break, we do prayer. Yes, day-to-day -day activities. So what does it mean? It means that we are just finding a path. We are just finding a way to reach God. That is what we need to understand and that is what we need to learn from our mother. That's always important. That is why usually our mother teaches us to pray to God before we begin our day-to-day -day activities and before going to bed also. And the most important sentence over here you need to observe is, prayer can be said silently or aloud. Obviously, we do prayer in a silent way. And very importantly, sincere prayer. See the word over there. As I told you that, observe the lines in your textbook too. Sincere prayer reaches God. Yes, my dear students, always do the prayer with a sense of sincerity, with a sense of kindness, with a sense of humbleness. That's always important. That sincere prayer always reaches God and He grants what you ask for. Yes, God is there to support you. God is there to give what you, whatever you ask for you, whatever you ask. So, only the thing is that you have to have a good and a sincere prayer. So, that's what we need to understand from this particular pre-reading activity. Along with that, let us know about the poet that is Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Yes, it is very important to know about the, po about the poet who has written this particular poem. Yes, I want you to observe the paragraph and even the screen over here. Yes, as I told you that, this poem is written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, that is 1772 to 1834. Hope you can easily make out the year here. 1772 means he was born in and 1834 means he passed away. That is the thing that you need to understand when we read 1772 to 1834. Yes, I hope you understood the uh, no, meaning of that. Yes, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, 1772 to 1834. And he was an English poet. He was a philosopher. He was a critic. See how fantastic those words are. Of course, generally we say Samuel Taylor Coleridge and many number of English poets we read in our textbook. Along with that, we need to observe Samuel Taylor Coleridge is a philosopher. He is a critic. And his knowledge of philosophy... His knowledge of science and his knowledge of literature was wide and deep. Try to understand those words and observe. The words are philosophy, science and literature. How lovely, no? Yes, his knowledge of philosophy, his knowledge of science and literature was wide and deep. Moreover, his powers of conversation was unique. Yes. Above all, my dear students, underline the lines and the words over there and remember his best known poems are the best known poems are the Rim of the Ancient Mariner. Underline that one in your textbook and remember my dear students. The Rim of the Ancient Mariner. The next one is Kubla Khan. Very interesting story about a Kubla Khan. And also as well as for his major prose work, that is Biographia and Literaria. See that word over there. Biographia and Literaria are the most important major prose work of Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Above all, one more sentence. His poems, his poems directly and deeply influenced all the major poets of the age. That's what we need to understand. And here this particular poem that is in child's evening prayer the child is praying for its parents if you just observe those picture my dear students the entire poem mainly focus about these aspects what are those if you just observe a picture of a father secondly a picture of a mother brother and sister and friends how lovely now this is what this is what we belongs to our family, our friends, our my brother, my sister. No, that is what the child is always focusing about. The child is praying for his parents and brothers and the child wants to be a source of joy. How fantastic the line is. The child wanted to be a source of happiness. To whom then? To his parents. 
Even you to also remember, my dear students, you should be the source of joy. You should be the source of happiness to your parents. Yes, that is what the meaning of the sentence there. At the same time, it is praying to God to grant him an innocent and grateful heart. So this particular line will focus at the last part of the uh, last line of the poem. When we read the poem, we will be able to understand very easily. Yes, so this is what the brief, uh, we can say the introduction or we can say the introduction of the poem that is in child's evening prayer. I want you to observe once again the pictures over here. The entire poem speaks about the, uh, the child uh, you know, praying to a father, a mother, a brother and sister and a friends. Hope you got the idea over here. Now, let us go to the glossary words. Yes, before going to the poem, uh, we want to observe the glossary words, which is most important to understand the meaning of those difficult words. Yes, once you just go through the textbook, you will come across these words, and you need to know the meaning of those words, obviously. Shall we see the words over here? Yes, even you can just open your textbook and go through the words over there. The first one is grace, that is charm. Charmful, we can say, charming, we say. The second one is reverence. Yes, the word has been used in the textbook in the, second, in the first paragraph. Reverence means respect. Yes, we should give respect to our father. We have to respect our teachers. We have to respect our elders. So that is the meaning over there. And evil, that is bad, harmful. Bad or harmful, you can say, or evil doing. We are not supposed to harm others. Then fourth one is slot, that is laziness. Idle, see the word is idle. Always remember, my dear students, idle mind is always the devil's workshop. Remember, don't ever be lazy, don't ever be idle. Always do one or the other activities. Don't keep your mind idle. Remember this one, the very interesting and important word there. And the fifth word is impart. Impart means bestow, bestow, imparting, we say. So at this point of time, I want to say that education, what is education? Education means imparting knowledge and experience to the ever-growing man in an ever-growing society. Bestowing or imparting, that's a wonderful word over there. And the sixth word is last sleep, that is death. So here it has been used in an abstract way, in an abstract sense. What exactly that word last sleep refers to, we will see in the paragraph. And the seventh one is eternal, that is everlasting. Uh, in, this, in this poem, uh, the God has given us an everlasting day. That is the meaning of the word over there. At last, of course, we should be thankful to God for, give us, or for giving us an everlasting day or eternal day. We generally say that one. So these are the important eight words which are given in the textbook regarding the poem that is in child's evening prayer. Hope you have got the meaning of those words. Now, let us directly go to the poem. I want you to open page number 65 as I told you before and see the poem and at this point of time I want to say that this poem is there for your memorization. You have to memorize the poem my dear students. Yes. Shall we just re re recite the poem? Recitation of the poem? Yes. Now I want you to observe the textbook and the screen and the words and the lines. Yes. Let us see the line by line. Name of the poem is A Child's Evening Prayer. First paragraph, that is first four lines. Air on my bed my limbs I lay. Air, E-R-E, air -E, on my bed my limbs I lay. God grant me grace my prayers say. O God, O God, preserve my mother dear in health and strength for many a year. Second paragraph, four lines. And, oh, preserve my father too. Preserve my father too. And may I pay him reverence due. And may I best thoughts employ to be my parents hope and joy. Yes. I want you to repeat after me also. Read it. Read the paragraph carefully, my dear students. Next four lines. And, oh, preserve my brothers both. Preserve my brothers both from evil doings and from slot. And we may always love each other. Our friends, our father and our mother. The last paragraph says, And still, O oh Lord, to me impart 
an innocent and grateful heart that after my last sleep I may awake to thy eternal day. Written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Hope you have got the meanings and lines of the words there. Uh, as I told you that my dear students, this poem is there for your memorization. Can you just try to uh, put some tune for this one if possible? Yes, let us try to uh, sing it in a different way if possible. Like even I want you to uh, you know, repeat after me. I just uh, tried in my own way uh, so that you can understand those lines, so that you can memorize the poem in an easy way. I am just trying out uh, to give a small tune for these lines. Yes, here goes it like this. A child's evening prayer. Ere on my bed my limbs I lay, God grant me grace my prayer say. Ere on my bed my limbs I lay, God grant me grace my prayer say. O God, preserve my mother dear, O God, preserve my mother dear. In health and strength for many a year. In health and strength for many a year. And oh, preserve my father too. And oh, preserve my father too. And may I pay him reverence due. And may I pay him reverence due. And may I my best thoughts employ, and may I my best thoughts employ, to be my parents hope and joy, to be my parents hope and joy. And oh, preserve my brothers both, and oh, preserve my brothers both, from evil doings and from slot, from evil doings and from slot, and we may always love each other, and we may always love each other. Our friends, our father and our mother, our friends, our mother and our father. And still, O Lord, to me impart, and still, O Lord, to me impart, an innocent and grateful heart, an innocent and grateful heart, that after my last sleep I may, that after my last sleep I may, Awake to thy eternal day. Awake to thy eternal day. Hope you have understood the poem and uh, hope you have also repeated after me. Uh, let me tell you, so this poem is there for your memorization. Uh, try to observe those lines and try to learn. Okay, fine. Let us go to the explanation part of the poem, everyone. Yes, if you just observe the first four lines of the poem, as the line says like this, Ere on my bed my limbs I lay, God grant me grace my prayers say, O God, preserve my mother dear in health and strength for many a year. See how lovely the child is you now doing the prayer. In the first sentence itself only, the child is, Before I go to bed, I am on my knees. If you just observe the picture given in your textbook, my dear students, how beautifully the child is on his or her knee and doing the prayer. So, before I go to bed, the word ERE -E refers to before. ER means before. Try to understand the meaning over that. Don't get confused. ER on my bed, my limbs I lay. ER means before. Before I go to bed, I am on my knees to offer my prayers. I am on my knees to offer my prayers. Prayers. What is a prayer? I am thankful to God. I am really thankful to God for making my day a very happy. I am thankful to God for making my day wonderful. I am thankful to God for making my day fantastic. 
So I am really thankful to God that God has given me this particular day. So that is what the first thing the child is addressing to the God over there. And next the child is saying, I pray to God, I pray to God to protect my mother. How wonderful, no? My dear students, try to understand, we have to pray that, we have to pray to God, saying or asking that, let God protect our mother. Because mother is most important. Mother is the representative of God. As we all know that, mother is the first teacher. Mother is the one who teaches. Mother is the one who mould us, who protect us. So obviously it is our duty to uh, no, pray to God to protect our mother. Try to understand my dear students, I pray to God to protect my mother because mother is most important. So please protect and preserve my mother in both strength and health. That is the word we need to understand. We have to do the prayer, we have to ask God, let my mother have that strength. Let my mother have that good health for many years, for many, many more years. Generally, we say, no, uh, whenever there is, an, uh, there is a birthday celebration, we say, many more happy returns of the day. No, generally, we say like that. So, that's what we need to ask God, let my mother, uh, no, let, let my mother be happy and strong and strength for many years. That is the meaning of the first four lines. Try to understand, my dear students, let me read it once again. Before I go to bed, I am on my knees to offer my prayers. I am thankful to God for making my day happy. I pray to God to protect my mother because mother is most important. So please protect my mother, preserve my mother in both strength and health for many a year. After that, and oh preserve my father too. Yes, oh God, preserve and protect my father for whom I pay my respect, my reverence due. And I always carry my best thoughts so that I always make my parents happy and joyful. Yes, it is our duty, my dear students, try to understand, it is our, our duty that we have to make our parents always happy and always joyful. So, at this point of time, I want to say, don't, don't ever hurt your parents. Don't ever, ever hurt your parents, my dear students. Always keep your, keep, keep your best thoughts in your mind. Always carry your best thoughts in your mind, so that your parents will feel very happy and joyful about you. And after that... Oh, preserve my brothers both. Yes, this is about your brothers, your sisters. Yes, try to understand. Pray to God. Oh God, please take care of my brother and sister. Yes, we have to do the prayer in such a way that we have to ask the God to please take care of my brother and sister. They are very young. Please protect them. From where? From evil doings. Because they are not aware about the situations. They may commit some mistakes. So please, God, protect my brother and sister from where? From evil doings. And please bless all of us to have a love each other. Let us have a love and affection among each other. Who are those? If you just observe the pictures over here, try to understand. That is our father, our mother, our brother and friends. This is what the very interesting part of this particular poem, my dear students. After that, in the last paragraph, the child speaks about... And still, O oh Lord, to me impart what the child is asking the Lord to give or impart or bestow. That is an innocent heart, a grateful heart. See the beautiful sentence at last. O oh God, make me innocent and impart the quality of innocence and good thoughts and grateful heart. At last, child express he will sleep and will awake for the tomorrow's eternal day, everlasting day. Who has given that everlasting day? The God has given that everla everlasting day, eternal day. That is why the conclusion part of the poem says that a child like a person, try to understand, a child like a person is always close to God because he has a sincere prayer. The child always prays to God very sincerely. We grown-ups have a lot of disturbances. Am I right? Yes. That is why child like person is always close to God and his or her sincere prayer reaches the God and always remember, God grants whatever you ask for. That is the conclusion part of the poem, everyone. Hope you have understood the explanation of each and every paragraph. Fine. So after that, let me just give you a conclusion by reading this particular statement. Dear God, touch the people around me. This is my personal prayer to you all. 
please listen to me dear god touch the people around me keep them happy and safe give them give them love and compassion and care keep them happy and safe give them love compassion and care bless them all with good health peace in mind and kindness in heart especially the one who are listening to this message especially the one who are reading this message fine so let me also pray to god with all these good blessings fine so let us go to the next part of the uh, lesson there pick out the rhyming words from the poem yes uh, obviously whenever we read a poem we come across number of rhyming words like this so i want you to observe the rhyming words and afterwards you just underline those words in the in the in the poem so there are number of words like this day say may year dear joy employ slot both other mother impart heart lay say so these are the rhyming words you just underline your in your textbook and just practice once is that clear everyone that's good so at last let us go to the home assignment so in which you are supposed to write an answer for some five questions let me read it clearly and if you get an answer you just note down there also so in home assignment i want you to write the answer the first one is who does the child pray for of course you know the answer the child pray for a god and even for the family for the friends and for the mother like that as i told you in the beginning and what does the child pray for its mother the child pray for its mother both in strength and health in order to get and what does the child pray for its father and in the fourth one the child wants to be a source of joy to its parents which lines in the poem show this particular uh, you no know, like sentence you need to extract and in the fifth one oh lord to impart an innocent and grateful heart so here who does me refers to what is the child asking for and what is the meaning of the word grateful so i want you to write an answer for all these questions note it down in a sheet of paper and show it to a teacher once you go for a class okay so on that note uh, we have completed the poem that is a child's evening prayer and as i told you that this is also there for your memorization so on that note let me conclude my session by giving this home assignment is that clear everyone fine thank you and presented by mr rahman ali working as an english teacher ghps budugumpa koppal district thank you everyone anudina anukshana maniyellu kaliyona ಕಲಿಕೆಯ ಹೊಸ ಹಾದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜೊತೆಗೂಡಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯ ಹಾಕೋಣ ಸಂತಸದಿ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಾಯಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಸ್ ಯಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್